a grey beard and he's bent with him. How does he how is he supposed to know that he's done the right thing as far as you're concerned? Because without the float. <laughs> he's really showing me up. I'm like, this is the best I've got. He's gonna rear brunk, jump on you, and he's like, Well I was hoping so. He kicks, she bites. She People. Yes. Literally what? the best he's ever been. I've been here so I learned positive reinforcement. I'm percent sure, but he's very riggy. So oh, okay. I would like to imagine he's possibly a rig. So now this way. So I'm going to go from, from, I'm blocking him here because I don't want him into me. So I'm feeling there's yoga and all sorts of things going on here as well. Meditation. Yeah. Oh, I, I knew it. Meditation. Yeah. meditation. It's all happening. I, I, about that time. <laughs> I think uh, I should go. Don't one. get thinking about it. <laughs> 50 volunteers they have. 50? 50. 50 volunteers. Oh. Blue skies. Sea view. Suntan, obviously we're not in Wales uh, at the end of March. So yeah, guys, we're abroad. We're, um, we've been asked to come out to help some people with some horses and it's Tenerife. Okay guys, so here's a map, the best one I can find for this really at the moment. So we, we're out of shot at the UK, at the top we've come down uh, across Spain, Portugal, and then we're alongside Morocco really here and Algeria. This is the Canary Islands there group of volcanic islands we're on the biggest one which is Tenerife with a big volcano called Mount Teed and that's us and then the surrounding ones are uh, islands like Lanzarote which is the other one Gran Canary uh, there's several lovely islands to visit and they are a part of Spain Spain owns these islands so it's like being on Spain really that's where we are we're in Tenerife me and Tanya have been here before once a long long time ago now don't laugh guys, but that is 40 years ago, me and Tanya on Mount Teed on Tenerife, 40 years ago. And there we are the other day, uh, 40 years later, and uh, same uh, mountain. It's lovely to come back actually, and we're, we're going home today. So we've done, I think it was three horses, but two of them uh, at the same place uh, are anonymous unfortunately. Didn't want it filming, I totally, totally respect that. Uh, but we've got one good video today. We went to a rescue centre. Uh, a lot of horses are there, actually. A lot of animals are there. And I hope you enjoy this one. I'm sure there's some learning in it and some things to add to your toolbox within this video. And it's a very uplifting video as well. So I hope you enjoy, enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I'll make a start. This is a bit different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, there's the ocean. So we're trying to find Horse rescue. Tenerife. What's the horse rescue? It's called, isn't it? Tenerife horse rescue. Tenerife horse rescue. Right, let's have a look. Your destination is on the left. Okay, okay let's just pause here a second. And oh, they take donations in there. Mm -hmm. So, guys, this is a little message. Tanya's going to read it now. It's one we were sent about Capri. That's the horse you can see in this picture now. Um, and it'll give you an idea of what uh, help is needed. And you're kind of here as i'm meeting this horse now you'll know as much as me about what is needed and what's going on so tanya will read it now so we have a horse capri he is one of our first horses that we rescued here at the sanctuary and he came from a riding school because he was too boring nobody wanted to ride him now when we took his shoes off and we took away the bits he became very excited high energy horse loving to gallop and run everywhere now he's really good, he's pretty well behaved under the saddle. However, he, as he gets older, his arthritis is affected. He has both ring bone and hock arthritis, so it's very important that he moves around. However, when you walk him in the hand, he can explode. Our horse manager had a very, very good relationship with him, working closely with him for years, and still struggles to take him on a walk in hand. Everything on the other side of you is terrifying. I have never seen him. I have seen him almost jump into a car. He will rear if you try and take him in the round pen. He will rear and run at the gate and really doesn't have any care for humans' personal space. So he really struggles to be taken on a walk in hand or any groundwork. But if we could get him to a place of doing groundwork, which would be successful, it would really benefit his quality of life. 
and we never want to ride him unless it's best thing for them. You came at a great time because we were just wondering how to chart changes the exercise plan uh, because something needs to change. So this is Lana guys. She's the horse manager and trainer, head trainer for the Tenerife Horse Rescue. And we quickly introduced to her lovely person and we start having a chat about um, about Capri and uh, yeah so the main video starts now really he's he's not really ridden he loves to be ridden but he's not really ridden because the girls can't he's so bad on the ground okay it's and, grand and I agree with with not riding a yeah. horse that's bad on the ground because yeah. you are stealing a ride yeah. I always say to people if they're not good on the ground why ever would you and one day an accident will happen you know so I totally agree with you but it'd be nice if you could get him better on the ground over the next few months Send us yeah. video of you saying, well, you were right, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. It made a big difference to him. And Capri was given to us, not 100% sure, but he's very riggy. Oh, so okay. I would like to imagine he's possibly a rig. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he's a really amazing horse. To be honest, when I was here before the baby, I grew such a great relationship with him. Um, he wouldn't let two people do his wormer, but he would let me on my own do it. Uh, he's a really amazing pony, but even then, if I tried to take him on a walk, it's everything on the opposite side of me is terrifying. He's trying to jump on top of me. Hang on then, so if you're on the right hand side of him. It doesn't matter which side. Oh, it's oh okay. It's always the opposite side. I can switch sides, then everything's terrifying on the other side. Wow. I've seen him almost wow. jump into a car wow. on the road. He's definitely, his eyes are fine. Yeah, do you have a vet look at stuff? Or? Yes, we have the vet. Yeah. She's available every Thursday. She comes by at wow. least a couple of times a month. Usually. And then, yeah, so obviously, to deal with horses, a lot of it is from your own experiences, how you get on with them, uh, and, and it's who you look at. Through centuries of horsemanship, you end up with certain people, and certain people will spark, and you start looking at them. Oh. What's your influences? What's your uh, people you look at kind of thing? Um, if you haven't got if it's just yourself, it doesn't matter, but is there anyone in particular, any style? I would have to say the people I've learned from in person. More than okay, the that's I watch good. Online. Yeah, because yeah. I'm very much I can watch something cool yeah. if I experience it. So being with someone and someone explaining it, there's not particular people that you follow on the internet and and and, there's, and, there's and a styles. There's on Instagram, but I couldn't even tell you the Instagram the name. handles now. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's I, refreshing. Mm. I've been here, so I learned positive reinforcement. It's nice to see all different. This yeah. is what you know. You learn from different styles, yeah. and you become you. I like okay. That. You become you, uh, some things ethically, what maybe I would do, wouldn't suit. Yeah. But at least observe, remember and compare it. Yeah. Now positive reinforcement, is that is that the style you use? Uh, is it a click or a target or? We use both, clickers, targets. Yeah. That's why when you had the flag, yeah. we have something very similar. We have a, the extendable stick yeah. with a ball of vet wrap at the end mm -hmm. for the target for them. So I think if I had a fall, I would love to work with positive reinforcement from the beginning, okay. but I like to take aspects of everything that I've learned everything, in my life yeah. to do that. I, I, obviously, I've tried all different mm -hmm. things. Um, positive reinforcement is something I don't do now. So you just heard a mention of positive reinforcement. Um, this is an opportunity. I'll put a little clip, a couple of clips here from Tenerife Horse Rescue's own little video. Um, very good little video, actually, and I'll show you how to find the video after these couple of clips. But this shows the kind of training, um, you know, methods that are used at the rescue. Uh, give you a good idea what we mean by the terminology given to it as positive reinforcement. So this quote is the foundation of positive reinforcement. And as horse trainers ourselves, or being horse mummies, horse owners, it's our responsibility to ask them the question, but to also accept the answer as a no. Smile like movement. So the horse learns that it receives rewards when it completes the task that it is being asked of. It is therefore more driven to complete the behavior because it knows it will receive a reward. In this video you can see Leia using positive reinforcement techniques with her horse, Cadet. My fly swat! <laughs> this is my chosen target. 
and uh, I get these because they're really easy to get hold of, they're brightly coloured, they see, and they're super cheap and mm. they're light so you can just stick them down your pants like this when you're out to go off and do stuff and they're always there and then to give the confidence to the horse you can get it out and use it as a target when they touch it, it's when you click, give them the treat. These are my favourite ones. Nice. Now, if you want to see the whole video, go to YouTube and and just type in uh, why we train horses with positive reinforcement tenery force rescue, and you can see the whole video. And they go through a lot of um, their reasons why they do that kind of training. I I don't do positive reinforcement, but I use feed, especially for food driven horses. Okay, so I use feed. So I'll give a food reward. Not from my person, but a food reward for if a horse has gone into the trailer. Yeah. And uh, then, then the food will be in there. Not, not coming up the ramp type of thing. I don't find that well. Once you don't so fall well. off the edge. Yeah, I'm just thinking that. <laughs> uh, uh, this, is an, this, this is an interesting conversation, by the way. This is interesting for me as well. Um, I find the kind of horses that I go to. Oh, firstly, I'd say to make positive reinforcement really work well you have to be a good horse person to start with because it can really go West. it it can go south <laughs> it can go south <laughs> south and be and almost we go 30 percent of our clients that we go to 30 percent have have had positive reinforcement and been over treated for the wrong thing yeah. and when you look at the best circus trainers you've got uh, liberty. Who, who, uh, liberty trainers mm -hmm. Yeah, they use feed reward, not constantly, and they have their whips, they will use feed, but they know when a horse is starting to... They are good to, horse people to start. They're, that's what I'm saying, yeah. If you click at the wrong time, like yeah. the second you, yeah. it's not the... It's not what you were looking thing. for, and yeah. not every horse can benefit from it, yeah. because an alpha horse, an alpha horse will not allow any other horse to come in and take its feed. Very rare. And what happens if that happens? The herd ranking order is challenged daily. It can be with slight emotional energy, ear pinning, open mouth, and kick threats to a full out challenge. If a, so it's about the space. So that kind of a horse, if you, I found, if you have the combination of a trainer or a horse person who didn't really know enough, allows that horse time and time again to come in, take their feed, it's, it's teaching them the wrong thoughts about us, okay? Yeah. Not all horses. So I'm just spinning something off for you to consider, which will take you forward so much better. Because remember, I've been where you are, I've done all of that. And I, I do, food for a, a food orientated horse is great. For me, it's in the right time. Um, and how many so, horses have we been to, and you've said this, and they've stopped hand feeding immediately, yeah. and the belly. And it can be a little bit uncomfortable, guys, showing different ways of training, and some, some, a lot of rescues do use positive reinforcement, okay? Um, I have noticed that. It's uh, kind of a training where, it's a feelings-based training, really, as well. That's the way I can explain it. And some horses do okay with it, as long as your timing is absolutely uh, correct else it can be a disaster but it is difficult for me but I know from the conversations I'd had with the girls there were horses there that I knew uh, did not need positive reinforcement they did not need to take feed from a human being constantly and moving into their into their space so I knew that so I owed it to them really to try and give my opinion and and give them something else to consider and they were like sponges actually in all fairness they were and they did listen, and maybe they'll consider, maybe whether on some of those horses, because I gradually realized some of the horses, the last thing they need is a, a target and treat, click and treat training. Uh, they do not need that. Ones that have been aggressive, uh, they had one bite some 
somebody who got that long ago. It's, it's especially the one I'm going to work now because that one gets really upset and doesn't doesn't um, hunt leadership from a person when the anxiety sets in because it can't trust somebody who it can go and take feed from. It doesn't work like that. But uh, yeah, so that was an interesting conversation. One that um, went okay really and maybe the girls might consider. Maybe a horse comes in and they think, well no, Steve, Steve thought um, better not to you know, do some real groundwork instead of the uh, treating on that. But, uh, I'm glad that that was over with, really. Uh, that, that's a good discussion to have. Yeah, but no, consider that. Sure. Consider some horses you might think, hang on, he's getting a little bit pushy. busy and pushy. And pushy, stop yeah. that at that point. Stop yeah. and make it about you being the alpha and about space. Be kind, but be so and that, as kind as you can be, but as firm as necessary. Yeah. Uh, with a smile, big, yeah. always a big smile. She's always got a can. smile on she her has. face. She has. We didn't need to tell her that. <laughs> awesome. I like to put out what I want back. Abs so this is, this is Capri. Capri. Mm -hmm. I had a car called a Capri. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever heard of a Capri? Mm. You're yeah. probably too young. Oh, no, this it is wasn't Renault. Renault. No, no. Oh, no. No. Uh, it was a Ford a Capri <laughs> okay. back, back in the day. So we're talking probably 40 yeah, years ago. I'm sure some, some people are wondering what a Capri was. And there's a Capri, just like one I had. Yeah, and horse's wow. name. Look at that. So that's nice. Now, I just noticed there, again, compare. I never pat them, okay? okay. Ever, ever, so ever. No, it's but I do what's called cup. Now, cup is where, um, if I just meet him a minute, <laughs> um, a cup a is where lip. you can... He's chilling. Can cup. Yeah, He's cup, got cup your hands. Ooh. Yeah, no, that's different. So not full contact. Oh. Well, not not a slap Excuse type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I found the relationship with my horses has been better in the last 25 years since I n I don't do it. I cup more when I'm starting a horse to ride, so I get them used to all of that. But I don't never ever slap. And I, the amount hundreds of people have messaged me saying things are so much better. He doesn't pin his ears so much anymore. He doesn't do this. Doesn't do that. So just something to yeah. compare. Remember. Observe, remember, and compare. Try cupping them now and again, but I would stroke because that's yeah. all a mother would ever do with the yeah. with the foal. Scr scratches. My daughter loves scratches. My daughter loves to scratch them. I don't scratch them. So I just like, so all I'll ever do, all I'll ever do is is a long stroke like this, right? I'll touch their forehead, just touch. I don't. Uh, my daughter scratches them all over, and then I'll cup. So you'll, you'll hardly hear it. That's it's tricky to find someone. I love it when people come in with more knowledge than me. And I well, get to I'm a lot older than you and I have, I, I, I've got, I have seen a lot, done a lot <laughs> and I've got a lot wrong. Um, so oh, that's how we learn. For, first of all, he seems to be lowering his head a lot anyway. That's, we can't really work on that at the moment. How about flexing? Um, flexing? Yeah, okay, do you, do, flexing. you haven't done any flexing. Well, right, li little things, just to, if you are gonna ride him, it's gonna help you. If you can flex him really well, both in the, this and the bit. Do you ride bitless or with the bit? We are bitless. You're bitless, so this is fine. So, if he's getting a little bit upset, you need to do a one rein stop out there. You need to be able to control his hind quarters. So you have some control that can offset his brain from what's happening around. You need control. So you would start off by standing where your, where your legs would be and then asking him to flex his neck round to you. Do you want to try that first? All right. He heard do you, you, do you want to do you want to try it and then I'll watch you do it and then so, so this is flexing <sighs> try and get right into where your legs would be yeah yeah and then see whether you can flex him around to you right right in to so step back a bit yeah that's good now the other side that's good it's quite light there I think he, he would enjoy a bit of uh, this kind of stuff, wouldn't he? Yeah. Right, so get your, get your hip right into where your legs will be and use your other hand. Use your other hand. Okay, stop, stop. Let me, uh, let me try and help you with that a little bit. What you really want to do, I'm going to do that side in a minute because he was going to keep going. So, what we want to do is, if you come around here and see, now when he puts his head down, 
when I'm going to be dealing with him now, I don't want him to keep dropping his head because he'll do it when you're riding him, okay? So he has to move into some sort of pressure. So when he does, I'm going to just a little tap up. That's nothing. That's like touching him with a sock, all right? Just a little to say, no, not now, all right? And the same with riding. He, he has to move into a little bit of something to say, no, not down there, while I'm with you, all right? You so. He bronks some bucks. Yeah. Right, now then. He gets the if you, and then if you, loose again. Lovely. Right, now look, I'm going to come into the hip and I'm going to bring this in and I'm not going to release ever until he gives here. There. Did you see him give a little bit? Yeah. That extra little If you bit. can, he has to give and go light, else he won't turn very well, a bit less. All right, so there, I'm going to just going to say and just give him a little rub when he did that. I want him, right, so I'm going to go again. Now, someone didn't tell me to take my sunglasses off, did they? Ah, thank you. <laughs> I'll give them sunglasses are not great for doing this, for, 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 yeah. for grandma. Right. I've put my sunglasses on to show you guys. It's something I've compared with so many horses now. And I always say to people, especially if you're with a troubled horse, worried horses, um, I've found a massive difference. Even though I naturally squint like my dad did, so I really benefit from sunglasses, I take them off now. Uh, because horses read a lot of our intention from our eyes, so I just take them off and squint if I need to, and I find I'm much more successful. Horses much prefer seeing our eyes. And I even use the closing of my eyes for a split second when a horse does something right, like hooks on for a second, and I back off and I shut my eyes. It takes all pressure off. So. We can pressure a horse with our eyes um, and then we can back off with our eyes. So, you know, I say take them off uh, and you'll do much better, in my opinion. So, tell him how good he is. I'm going to push my hip in here and you see how this is getting better already? Yeah. No, not down there. Not down there. This is his habit. Yeah. He's dropping down when he's around people. Now, if he was a riding school horse, that's probably because he took the reins out of people's hands. You ever seen that riding horse? Yeah. They pull the reins out. Uh, right, so again, my hip is going to go where our legs will be, and then I'm going to get lovely feel. Do you see that lo lovely little feel? Up. See how I'm just, I'm not pulling up because that just makes him dull. In it, and then he realizes how weak we are. It's a little tap. All right, so. Now the other side is where he keeps moving. All right, so I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm doing it because I don't want him to step on your foot. Thank you. Tan? <laughs> This side. Like, this isn't gonna keep. Right. There you go. So this way he will keep moving, but it's important to keep going until he stops his feet. Yeah. All right. Okay. So here. So here he's moving. So I'm going to keep going until he stops his feet and goes right. There you go. Did yeah. you see that? See his yeah. head. Yeah. I now if, if I tap on this rope enough, he will realise within three sessions that if he drops his head while I'm holding this, there's nothing in it for him. Or what, what does he get? He just gets a little bump like there. So no emotion to it. I'm just, it just is a symptom of him. When I'm holding this, dropping down, he feels it. Yeah. All right. Eventually he won't want to do it. Yeah. So does that make sense about this flexing? You've got to be able to turn him bitless. So you need this Right. Do this, but you've got to get your hip in here, yeah. okay, and wait for this to go nice and just check that you can. That was unrequested forward motion, so I've just asked him to, any unrequested forward. Now, will that work to get rid of him? Look at the feet, okay? Yeah, you're right. Look at right. the feet, <laughs> right. So this has to go in your back pocket when you... Have to get back pocket. Okay, so flexing left and right is a really good thing to do for your riding bit less because you'll you're, you're, you're steer better yeah. out there. So lots of that. Dropping the head, well, I don't think we're going to go there because if he we do, he, do, he does it. Well, no, actually, he's not so much now, is he? Would That's you agree? True. So that was five little tap there. He thought, oh, now... You're talking about it now. Yeah. He thought about it, but he knows he's going to run into something. So you must, with your riding horses, you don't want that, all right? So, but now I do want him to, all right? 
I'm going to squeeze here and I'm going to pull a little bit of pressure here. And then when he drops down, all right, when he drops down there, I've released. Yeah. I've released. Now this is all because of his, would you agree? Yeah. The reason he's doing this is because he's used to having... Little bits, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's, he's definitely... Um, right, yeah. so <laughs> I'm going to ask there. So I'm not going to keep doing it because most horses, you, you'd have to ask a bit longer than that, but it's nice to be able to lower their heads when you want them to. Yeah. At the asking, not his idea, our idea when he gets upset. One more time, a little bit of pressure and he's down. But because I asked him to go down. You're not gonna. No, okay. no, no. But now I am. Right, okay. So that's that. Can you try this side, uh, the other side then? See whether you can try not to get stepped on, but it's important that he stops and flexes, that that doesn't mean movement. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you don't want that mean movement to him, you want it to mean flex. So try that. Yeah. Yeah. Then you run, run your hand down it a little. Yeah, he was on his way up then. Right. Now lift the rope. The reason I'm saying lift the rope is because you're never going to be steering him here, are you? You're going to be steering him. Up here. So you need the trajectory of that or here, if you're holding there, up, up towards where, get your hip in. There, look at that. And then rub him. So that you could get really good. If you get that good on the ground, you'll steer them so much better because where the nose goes, the toes goes. So you need to steer that head nice. Okay, that's good. Right then, the next thing is, I noticed quite a bit, that's it, and smile, that's good. Uh, I noticed when you're leading him, especially at the start, that he kind of comes on you a bit within your space. Remember, this isn't going to count for all these rescue horses. This is one that's, that, that loses you out there as a leader because that's why he's getting upset. So he needs more from you. One, don't hand treat him. Two, no unrequested forward motion. Now, what I'd say to you was, especially out there, and I would practice it an hour at a time whenever you get a chance, is when you stop, he stops. He has to stop when you stop. So... Practice that here. Walk him, walk him around and release. Good release. Thank you. Because that's how the foot come off. Walk him around and then stop. Okay. All right. I want to see you. When you stop, and we oughtn't have to beg them at the end, but he needs to, I'd have him walking slightly behind. So go somewhere with a bit of purpose. Go on, keep going around. And then when you stop, you need him to stop. Right, get, okay. So there you're having to push him back and beg him. Go again. Well, okay, that's good. And again. Right, you know, try not using the hand now to here. Just a loose, just a loose rein. When you stop, he needs to stop. Go on, stop. Okay, so can you see he's kind of not? No. Well, yeah, he's kind of losing you a bit. So I'll show you what okay. I, and then, uh, okay. Now there, now there, look, he, he, he came. Now I've slowed this down because it's a really important part of this session I had with him, with Capri. As soon as I take the rope here, he looks at me there and he checks me out straight away, just moves straight to me as if I'm not even there. And it's gonna have a terrible effect if I allowed him to think that. So here, and immediately, he's still walking forward there. I had to be very as gentle as I could be there. Usually I'd be a bit more black and white. I find horses are not keen on grey areas, but I, I managed to successfully sort of move him back out of my space and, and, and explain to him that's a, a no-no from now kind on. Kind of walk through me. Yeah. Now I'm going to bump a little bit here just to back him off me a little bit. This is the unrequested forward motion. 
Now, if I, if I worked with him three or four sessions, that is very unlikely to happen to me with him, you know, because he would be looking to me a little bit more. Like there, he's, he, he lost me, so I've just said, no, no, it's me. Yeah. For the hour I'm with you, it's me. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just um, lead him around here a little bit a little bit of purpose. Now, watch my foot. Now, now I'm going to back him up twice because I wasn't very happy with that. Okay, watch my foot. I wasn't very happy with that. A little bit better. When I stop, oh, it's a little bit better, wasn't it? Would you agree? Tell him how good he is. Because he tried. Yeah. Wasn't that great, but he tried. He you kind also, of... You switch up your direction so that he's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to... You know, we want a little bit of life. Um, but watch my foot. Back. That was... That was still a foot. So an hour of this, you could have him... Look. Step back. Stop. Don't go down there. Thank you. Yeah. Stop. Oh. Tell him how good he is. Reward the slightest try. There. So I've not got him right on me, have I? No. Stop. Right. I'm going to back him up too. Now I tuck you do the shush shush. Yeah, works well. Okay. So, if he takes one foot towards me now, which he's set ready to, I would love that because I would be aware, even though I'm talking to you, I'm aware of what he's doing with his feet. There, stay with me. Now, I did touch, sorry, because I always do that. So, so, every time he does that, it gives us chance to work on something so it can never go wrong, ever. That makes sense, it can never go wrong. Always be aware of those feet. And, and that's, you know, I would really work on that with him because he's got to feel secure as you as a leader. Yeah. Don't let him into your space too much. Don't let him take that feed and work on the stops, the flexes, and definitely the backups. Yeah. Oh, the backups, definitely. Yeah, yeah uh, there. Do you see thought about it? So, because he did that, I'm going to release for each foot, there. So you release for the foot comes up when it's on the floor, continue the pressure? A little bit, but eventually, if he's going back, the pressure comes off. It's just your mental yeah. pressure and your focus. Yeah. So every time he comes forward, it gives you a chance. Now, he did something there that you might have missed. He actually backed up with what's called softness. And you'll see that softness come in now. Right there, he gave a beautiful softness. His back came up, and that's, that's just a wonderful thing to have from a horse, a giving softness. But that softness, if you can release for that softness, it helps their riding, their backs and everything. It's not hauling them in with a bit. Yeah. It's natural softness. Now that was, un that was uh, right, he's gone straight back. Right, so he, he really wants to be in this bubble of mine, but you've got to have that bubble when you want it, all right? So, so what have we covered so far? We've covered the, the, the flexing for lightness, left and right, which will help your riding. At the hip, at the hip, lovely. And remember, a little bump if he drops his head too low. The backing up. See if you can stand here, see whether you can see him go light, what I'm looking for. Look. Watch it. I'm going to keep going. No, there. Yeah. Did you see him drop in? He's holding. Th it. He's holding that axis, which lifts all this up, you see, yeah. for riding. Okay, so, and he'll probably get softer now. There. Lovely. Really nice. Okay, so, are th those all making sense to you? Yeah. Right, th that was quite a nice stop there. See whether you can disengage the hindquarters now. Or, See whether you can get a better stop. What do you want to do? Let's try now, remember there's history with you. Yeah. So he's kind of coming here a lot. Yeah. 
So don't get upset. It's something you can work on after. Yeah, if you yeah. want to try a couple. But remember, I step my foot back and my shoulders you come to down. The side a little bit, don't you? Well, I don't know, did I? That might be age. So at least a couple. That, might, that might be age. I wonder if it was like a, a barrier with your foot, uh, you know, like creating a No, line. no, I just, I just, you know, eventually you just stop and they stop. Uh, yeah, just see whether you'll stop a bit better. But be deliberate. I think she should ride this horse at walk, don't you? And I've... Nice. Yeah, come round again. Yeah. But, but she said she wanted him good on the ground. Well, you see, it wouldn't take long to get him good on the ground. So, first thing is, right, that's pretty good and you didn't push on the chest. Right, let me, let me have that a minute. You could, this flag could help you when you go and catch horses to move horses away. Yeah. Um, but you don't want to scare them with it. No, it's just an it's, extension. It's an extension of you, but it can really work for trailering horses, for forward motion and everything. Uh, if I put it on his back, um, see, he's a cool horse, isn't he? He's so much I bet you couldn't do that with, uh, with, um, He's really showing me up. I'm like, this is the best I've got. He's going to rear run, jump on you. And he's like, well, I was hoping so. <laughs> um. It's just crazy, honestly. Like. See, see how he stops better for me? Because there's no history. Yeah, there's all, it's just from the off. It's from the off with me. He knows that I don't want him to keep putting his head down in this equipment. Yeah. Because that's the worst thing for riding when he does. He's almost, he's almost doing it and almost thinking, hmm. When Stephen's got me, he's not, something happens weird when I put my head down. But that, the more a horse yields to you, the more you are the alpha. The more you are moving his feet, he's not moving yours. Make sense? Yeah, and then the more comfortable they feel with me in return. Yes, now you're getting it. And when he, just while you're with him, eventually that bump, you won't have to bump their attention. You'll just do, and they're with you. Yeah. But if they're genuinely worried, you cannot do anything about that. So, disengage. Yeah, nice disengage. So you know what disengage is? That's when, if you cross the legs like this, you've got no power. So if he got upset out there, which apparently, have you ever led him out? Yeah, no, no, okay. When he gets upset, but remember this all heads all my groundwork heads towards riding. It's all relevant to riding. Unrequested. There, look at that, beautiful. Good, you noticed it. I love his little. Yeah. Um, <laughs> disengaging, if a horse is gonna buck, rear, run off with you, take your places out there you didn't want. If, if we train them that we can one rein stop them and disengage them, they can't rear if we disengage the hindquarters. They can't run up. Off if we keep disengaging the hindquarters. That's where the power's gone. So if we teach them enough about that and on the saddle, you have the much safer horse. So both sides then disengage. Keep going. See that step in there. You got one and you stopped when you got one. Yeah, he, he was stepping then. You want him to really nicely flow, yeah. flow in there. Um, this side I find more tricky. I don't know if it's for the arthritis or the person. Well, I was try, trying, to, trying to figure that out myself. But um, let's just see if we can... Uh, what I would say to you is lift, lift, yeah. I noticed as I was doing it, yeah. I did notice. Lift, always lift the hand so that, so that when we do it in the saddle, we lift the hand unrequested. So that was quite a lot. So there I... I was as firm as necessary. Yeah. So I've moved, there was nothing in it for him, was there? Because they're only problem solvers and they don't want unnecessary work. He just caused himself, he can ride into my space as if, let's check you out a bit now, because you haven't done me any harm yet. Let me just test you out. So there, he's gone back a bit more now. Okay, so yeah, always lift the hand for disengaging. So, so I'm gonna cluck a bit, release, cluck, release. That's not one. Release, release. You see how I released? I've never done it so, cons the way I was... So there, there, he, 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 he was right on me again. So I've said, 
But the fact that he did it doesn't bother me because I'm working on the backup. So it never can go wrong. Yeah, Whenever he does something that I'm trying to get out of him, it does not matter. Just keep on. But look how good that backup was then. You know, um, nice. Right, so did you see me um, releasing the lead rope then? You released it with the high hand. I release it mentally and with the hand a little bit, right? Because so. I've never, I can't the yeah. Ever there. 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 Nice job. Nice job. All right? Okay, I'm just seeing he'll just come in again because I want him to. And when you start wanting them to, you find it all goes away. All right, so, okay, so this side, okay. Re release, release, release. Nice. Come forward, stop, lovely. Okay, so we're getting there, aren't we? Yeah. Um, we're getting there, and I've just said, don't put your head down or even there. Uh, so that's pretty good, that's pretty good. So those all made sense to you yeah. so far? All right, okay, you better put that in your pocket. Um, now I tut, I know you shush, but I found tutting is so much better. Whether you can transfer your mind to that, I don't know. I've done all sounds and I found tutting works so well because it is a repetition of the cluck. And since day one, everyone would have clucked with him for forward. And I find they separate the cluck from the tut and it kind of picks them up a bit better, I find. But whether you can... Um, now the next thing is, you've got to try and get forward motion out of him. That's where you ask, it's not a lunge as such, but if I wanted him to go in a trailer here, I should be able to say go, and he go forward? Show me. This is basic groundwork, so I think you've got to be able to show, and also, when you ask, he shouldn't do this, right? He shouldn't ever consider this. So if you would ask me to go forward and I came in here, which a lot of horses do, that have been, it's not going to suit him, this hand trick. There. Lovely. Do you think he's getting lighter on the back up already? Yeah. I think so. Uh, I just have to have my hand there. There you go. So we, you're seeing some improvement. But you really need to have a forward motion. So eventually I'd like to be able to stand here and be able to say, go through here, me not move, disengage and go through here. Now, when I can achieve that with him, then you're getting somewhere as leadership. And I think this is a real good example of what I'm trying to explain there. This is Charlotte's uh, little pony, Darcy. And he came to us. He'd been hand-fed quite a lot. He used to bite and didn't know about space. And uh, we quit all of that. And it, he, it really, really helped him. And he's such a happy boy now. It's a good, good example. So I'm going to try now to not move my feet. Send him through. Not move my feet. Send him through. Not move my feet. Send him through. Not move my feet. Disengage back up to him. See that, guys? It's the same stuff. As leading his feet, us moving his feet, him not moving us. And I get all the horses to that stage. And then I find a lot of that, what goes out there, is it diminishes because you are a leader you you and they know when you're riding a horse all riding is is elevation you're leading them from their back them but not not here you're leading them from there it's no you're leading them so you've got to get that leading good and all the respect flexing being able to lead them out there without any problems then it's a lot easier when you're in the saddle because you're just leading them from a few feet different. All right, so see whether you can, uh, but I'm gonna ask you to try and keep, when you maybe come to here and ask your horse to lead on by you and you stay where you are without, without um, Capri going into you. So set yourself up. Hey, listen. When you said you don't want to pull, I used to have exactly the same thing in my mind. You, if you pull, pull from the side, because when you ride them, you've got to pull now and again. So don't think about keeping a float all the time. They've got to know what to do without the float. Without the float. 
Let's, uh, where's the flag? Let's get rid of uh, this one. You stay there. So you see how good these flags are? That was just nothing. And then every time he came, you do it again. And they get used to you. You only have to just show the flag. Oh, okay. They're brilliant. And the nice thing is, they just go. We, we never go riding without them. We never go nowhere without them. Put them in your pocket, in your pocket. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, he's in your space. So you gotta. Well, uh, have you got lunge whips and things like that here, or? We tend not to. Uh, no, no, no. I agree. That I try not to touch a horse with any yeah. stick. Uh, I agree with them as an extension. Yeah. But also as a okay. Because yeah. people come and they're like, but you're now, of reinforcement. What I'm going to do first, okay, let's take him over here. What I'll do first is, all I want is one step, a thought of forward motion. That's it. A thought. A thought. And I kind of set you up there because I didn't think it was going to happen, right? So I knew, pretty much knew what was going to happen there. I kind of knew that, but no, it doesn't matter. Right, you've done brilliant. Right, so I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm neutral. There's got to be a difference, right? I'm neutral. So now I'm going to change my intent. All I want is a foot forward, all right? So I'm going to stand here. Now, my intent is go forward, go forward with that foot, go forward, go forward, there. Now, because I had a foot forward, I had a foot forward there, something in it for him. He had to work out what I was thinking, what I wanted, stop, back up one, thank you. Right, so you see the difference there? So now I'm gonna go from neutral, neutral now to my intent. Forward with that foot, forward, there, he's gone. And I'm gonna build this up so I don't need the flag. So my intent is now go forward, not into me. I'm gonna block him here forward. Stop. Stay with me. All right, so now my intention is forward. Forward. Stop. All right. So I'm going to block him because he, he wants to come in on me. All right, so look, that's blocking now. Forward, there, he got it. So now this way, so I'm going to go from, from I'm blocking him here because I don't want him into me. There. Three, three sessions, and all you do is this with your arm. Not into me. Huh? Now it's important I'm doing this for you, to get this into you out of the way and he'll go, th he'll go through some emotion. No, that ain't going to do it, that ain't going to do it, just forward with your feet is going to do it. Forward with your feet. Now that's what's called from breakdown comes breakthrough. So we've got to go through a little bit of a breakdown. Right, so what did we just have? Straight away. Agreed? Straight away. So you've just witnessed breakthrough from breakdown. And that's getting really light. And a lot of that is what you did, because you kept doing it. So tell him how good he is. So now there's something in it for him. Immediately I asked then, he went forward with his feet. Yeah. And he didn't come right into my, I mean, he really wants to, can you see the space thing? He just wants to be on top of you which is not going to be good for you if you want to take him out riding or go somewhere or because he'll say, well, I can just come and into your space and get on top of you for safety anytime I want. Well, no, it doesn't work like that. All right. So that was unrequested and this is getting really light. Question. How does he, how is he supposed to know that he's done the right thing as far as you're concerned? How because he... he's having rest. This is beautiful now. So he did one thing for me. The last thing you do, the first thing they learn. That's why we should always finish on a good note. 
like, you know, if a horse does something really good, finish there. But if something happens bad, like a horse bucks you off or, or pinned his ears at you and, buck, uh, uh, and bit you or something, and then it ended there, when you pick up them, how, how long later, the last thing you do is the, the last thought they had with you. So I'm just, the more breaks he has for doing the right thing for me, um, it's, it's pressure and release, but it's just reward in the slightest try. Yeah, yeah, he did right there. He went forward. So I'm gonna block him here. Right, so you see how much easier that was? So we've gone through, we've gone through a breakdown there. Back up a bit. Now we're getting to his feet now. Yeah, stay with me. Uh, oh, for the, yeah. fa for, for the camera, probably. Oh, okay. I want it to be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's good you're uh, taking notice. Immediately. Forward motion immediately. Stop. Now, he's not ready yet for this, what I told you, because he would be pushing on me too much. If I, every horse, you should be able to have a gap and send them through and not move your feet. So the whole process is go forward, disengage, come back through. So you're doing all of those maneuvers in one. So you're really controlling the feet. But he would push on me too much. And I'd have to get, get a bit more, you know, deliberate, which is not the great place to do it here. But I would, see that was unrequested a little bit there. Do you see how he crept? So he's, tr you know, he says, oh, come on, Steve, let's be friends. Let's be friends. More. Well, we are friends, but I'm afraid I don't want. And there, get his attention. So disengage again. Lovely. He's disengaging really well this side now, isn't he? He had no clue he was supposed to give space to a human being unless he's pushed back. That last foot, there. You see how this is building? We're having a relationship about his feet. And if you can get that good, and it's not a five minute job, you won't, you'll be, I've had some horses you'd say, there's no way the rest of its life you'll be able to be ridden out. And I get this good for a few weeks and they go, huh? Because they feel comfortable that I can control their feet yeah. and that my space is everything. Any questions? Does that, make, does that definitely made sense? Have I explained it in a way that you might understand? Yeah. And it, it's, not being, it's not being horrible to the horse. It's actually positive. See, I see positive reinforcement slightly different than some people would say the positive, like you said. To me, what's the positive for a horse? What's the most positive thing is safety and leadership. Safety comes from leadership. So if we are not great leaders to them and they can kind of be in our pockets and walk through us a little bit and play up out there. And probably when he's done that, has he knocked you a bit? Yeah, you hear that? Yeah, I can imagine it. It knocks you a little bit. I miss that. So that's great because Well, well, if you can get the disengaging done from the saddle, that, that in minutes is coming better and he's disengaging nice now. That transfers to the saddle. As he starts to do that, you disengage him 20 times, one side, and then rub on him, love him and say, do you want to do it again? Because we'll disengage the other side. Because if you can disengage them, they can't do it. They learn, they're only in, it's, it's like a one rein stop. Have you heard of what that is? Yeah. You should do with race horses, you, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> a horses, if you teach a one rein stop good enough, they look for it because they're, in, they're only running or bolting because they're lost. They're lost, they're in trouble. You get it that good. As soon as you reach down, they know what's coming, they'll stop. And here's my own young horse I've just started, Chevy, uh, at a recent demo, and uh, I did a one rein stop and you can see he just, he, he started trotting when I didn't really want him to. I could feel him getting a little bit up. So um, he hunted the one rein stop and this will just show it exactly what I'm talking about and disengaging the hindquarters a little bit just to settle him. Go right and I'm waiting till he, uh, so touch him to a stop. I'm gonna bump his hindquarters out the way there and then that was nice. That was nice because that made a few things to 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 help a little bit. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm wondering what to do when they are in that anxious zone. 
them and they're snorting. Maybe you see the whites of their eyes in there. Well, you've got to have this down good before it ever go out there. You know there's a problem out there, but at the moment, his mind is still to push into you. Something you're going to have to try and deal with. Well, be particular about your space. You do whatever it takes. Don't use pain, but you know, if they come in, do something. Out your space, shuffle your feet. Do that with the flag, whatever. You cannot come in and knock you down else you are finished out there. I can't put it any clearer than that, but I think you're doing wonderful. I do. So that was pretty much where we ended the session there. Now it was probably about twice as long as you saw there, uh, but I can't put everything in because of the length of the video, but all the bits I think would make the difference and you would notice slight changes are in there. And uh, I would have uh, liked more sessions with him really, but um, Alania hopefully will will continue some of that and I found he was starting to come alive a little bit, he was starting to enjoy realising there's a communication to the feet and enjoying a little bit of leadership there and I, like I say, I, I found a lot of dullness that was in him was starting, he was starting to be more alert and uh, a bit more responsive, seemed quite happy actually um, so yeah I just wanted to say that about that. So after a nice break, a little bit of a chill out Alana and Capri went for a walk kind of in the wilderness and Alana she said we're definitely gonna have some fireworks now so let's see how things went. Let's see what you do <laughs> Yeah and he's like I'm gonna be good as gold. Now, if you just leave him there for a second and just rub on him. Rub on him, don't pat him too much. Just rub on him. You like your scratches? Okay, off you go again. She'll be back. And then just stop him again and just rub on him. Let, him, let his heartbeat drop down a bit. See if you can back him up two paces. Lift his head. You look at his feet, because so, it's his feet you're trying to control. Just, uh, so moments, he's pushing yeah. on you big time here. Now if he can push on you, yeah. we can't, we can't trust we you We came enough. here 40 years ago. Yeah. That was unrequested. We've been together for like nearly 44 but, years. You know, wow. um, yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, just, uh, oh, I need a medal. Oh, oh does he? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Obviously, if he gets too bad, then no we'll come straight back. I know. I don't want to get you hurt. Right, now, if he's going in front of you, turn him this way and round. So every time he goes in front of you, because you remember, you're leading him, he's not leading you. So off you go again. So if he comes past you, turn him again. Oh, I'd probably be doing this slightly differently. And maybe using the bowling stick to, to, to bump Capri back a little bit quicker and things like that. But it's not worth me doing that because those kind of methods will not sit with some of the volunteers and the rescuers. You know, so it's not worth... I, I'd actually be doing a disservice by asking to use those kind of methods when I know they would uh, kind of... They would, it wouldn't sit well. So I'm trying to do it in a different way that will help rather than them run away from that sort of thing. As I say, it's very much a feelings kind of training at these um, rescues. Yeah, you can see. Now you've made me aware of it. I'm doing a great job. Well, there you go then. <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you so much. Don't worry. No, it's fine. Is this honestly. better than usual? No, no, it's fine. Don't worry. Are we going up the road? Oh, okay. okay. Yes, go up here. Right, again, his nose in front of you. Remember, there's a leader and a follower. Okay. You can pull, you can pull me That'd up. Be good. There you go. So every time you've got to make, well, this is all about making our idea their idea. So every time I spend two hours here, every time his nose went in front of mine, he turns. And then in the end, it's his idea not to because it doesn't do anything for him. You can never make a horse do a thing. It's got to be their idea. That's beautiful. Looking good. Um, yeah, I know. 
and look, he's right behind you there yeah. now. So you can imagine that every day for a while. Uh, and that's the best he's ever been, Tan. Literally the best he's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> but the nice thing is, we've kept talking. Yeah. And he felt that. Yeah. They key into everything. He knew I wasn't worried about what's going on. Yeah. You almost wanted it to happen. He probably knew that and thought, well, I'm going to surprise you today. Uh, so that's awesome. And you know his spots, look. Now we might want to overtake you back down here. Circle, now, circle. I, I know, talking to you, I know, I know pretty much how your mind's working with training. I would have been telling you to do different things by now, but I'm telling you what I know will work for you and your ethics and the way your mind works about horses. So I'm asking you to do it in a slightly different way, yeah. if that makes any sense to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I try to tell people adjust your, adjust. to what your philosophy in life is. So I'm telling you slightly different if you don't, you know, because some people say, well, you wouldn't tell me that. There's a reason, because I know you wouldn't carry on some of the things that I would normally do, but I've got a lot of different ways. And I think um, telling you the way I'm going to tell you today is the, is the right thing to do. Um, now, can I suggest something? If you were going to start riding him out, if you did, or even having your days when you come out with him to get him so used to being here, he would look forward to it. But I would bring in advance a nice, his feed. I wouldn't feed him back there. Okay. I would make somewhere out, away, a positive. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you might hide a bucket down there or somewhere, and then you could maybe get someone else to take him one day when you took him. So there's something yeah, in I, it for I, him. Yeah. This is a positive area. But in a different Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I love this idea. Yeah, no, it is a great idea. I've used it myself so much and it's worked so well. Thank so yeah, hide a bit of feed in different areas and then and then maybe some different route. Yeah. And, 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 and so he but don't give it him too early. Yeah. Let go get quite a while. Yeah, get, get it far away. Yeah. So happy Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he hopefully he'll he'll say, Well, this isn't helping me. That's nice. Nice loose rain. Oh my lord. He's so good. This is going well, isn't it? Yeah, he's really cool and relaxed right now. Which is a real stark contrast to what you to what I'm used to. And I'm not lying, like I have tried so many different tactics, like I say. Okay. Riding out, walking back, walking in a group of Alone. Okay. And, usually, and then just stop him a minute and just rub on him again. Leaves the ground. Only ever release as it leaves the ground. Okay. So then when you ride you can you can use your reins to steer. Only when it leaves the ground you have to release. Okay. And then I like um, I think that's why I like yoga. I like to have very clear cues on when yeah. to release, when to do this, when to yeah. do that. So for me that's great to know. Yeah, when it leaves the ground and look at each foot as it's going back. But that's good. He's really relaxed, isn't he? Yeah. Right, I think let's head back and get a drink. Awesome. And we'll put him somewhere. Yeah, we'll follow. Best thing you can ever do, you've probably done it. You, you're in a position where you could do it, is watch a herd for 24 hours to watch them, get someone to bring your feed, your drink, and just actually watch them for a day. And you come out of it totally different. Field, so it's not a very big field. Yeah. But there's a few dominant horses in there. So it is that, more of an Yeah, that's uh, uh, makeup. One of them was the one yeah. we originally contacted you about. Right, okay. But I don't know how to train Nella to like put a touch, to be honest. You can't touch that horse? You can, but she doesn't like it. What does she do? Is she aggressive with it? She can become, yeah. In what way? Like a uh, strike out or yeah. she kicks, she bites. People? Yes. Why didn't we do that one? Well, we originally contacted you about her. I, I, it didn't actually say that about people, though. It sort of oh, okay. was about horses, that one. Ah. It, and I thought, well, I'm not going to get anywhere in the time I'm there. Now, guys, did you catch that? Um, it shows, actually, the professionalism of these girls. They know when horses are probably not um, suitable for people who visit. 
to go and pet the horses and whatever. And there's some aggressive ones there that they've kind of separated and, and, and hopefully work with a little bit differently. But uh, yeah, guys, now I said before, there's only certain types of horses um, that really, um, uh, you know, mixed in with a professional person with good timing that actually benefit really from, from this positive reinforcement. Now, horses like the ones that have just been mentioned, ones that are aggressive towards people, uh, it's the last thing that you want to teach a horse, in my opinion, guys, is about taking... The last thing they need is to be taught to come into our space and take our feed, and it gives them the wrong ideas about us. I'm, it's something I'm absolutely convinced of with all of the horses that I've worked. So those are the kind of horses where what is called positive reinforcement becomes negative reinforcement because someone's got to pick up the pieces. You're actually teaching them the wrong thoughts about us and they're ultimately in trouble then. So those horses are the ones I think that I wish I'd have gone to that paddock and known about that beforehand um, and hopefully would have given the girls a couple of tips uh, to, to help those move forward because uh, that's what I do. I go to a lot of aggressive horses and a lot of that way because of hand treating. But guys, I do appreciate... Loads of people hand treat, you know, I catch Charlotte, Mel doing it now and again. We're all going to hand treat and, you know, it's a very much a thing that makes us feel better as well. So it's not going to stop that. But my advice is always, if you're going to give your horse hand treats and carrots, always step them back, step them back a little bit and then either chuck it on the floor or if you need to give it by hand, give it by hand, but then step them back again. And uh, I find that that kind of minimalises the effect of them sort of going front end heavy on us and thinking of us slightly differently that they can uh, take feed from us. That's my advice. Yeah, whether it's whoa. Yeah, I use the whoa word, but whenever I use it, I very rarely use it. Use it. Whenever I use that word, it's stop and back up every time I use it or stop and turn more than 90 degrees every time. And I hate using it because sometimes, oh no, now I've got to back up. Now I've got... So I use it sparingly but if i want to stop and go forward i say easy okay. so that's what i say easy if i was ever going to go forward again from the stop but if i ever say well which would be your whistle yeah. then my suggestion is always if you use the whistle just back them up a little bit yeah. within within how many seconds three, three seconds so not right now. <laughs> no not not right now the afternoon is. right as any of your horses broke this Right, so there are some horses on here that, that are broke. You've got several pullbackers, yeah? Yes, Would they've you got say? better over time, but yes. And a few okay. difficult ones we have Okay, to so imagine this now. If, and, and carry this information with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Keep right, it so we're going to demonstrate this tie a little bit higher here. Now, now if, if a horse, if we tied to this, as you have there, yeah? yeah. And a horse especially one that's pulled back. Or, or let's go back to, the, to when it was two years old, the first time it pulled back. So this, something frightened it, or it hadn't been taught to lead forward. That's what usually happens. They haven't been halter broke properly. So they set back, yeah? Boom. Suddenly there is a pressure here. Yeah. What can't they do? What have they lost? They've lost their power of flight. You've heard it a million times. Most horse people have fight or flight or fight so it only has one option left yeah. it can't move its feet flight is gone so it will fight now if it fights enough and they can really I mean the power is incredible in that situation if it goes into full fight and it sets back and it shakes its head and that breaks what has it got back what has it just got back it's flight, it's flight. so then it will suddenly think oh my I, I now have the most important thing to me being a, a prey animal. I've got my flight. So, if that happens more than I say twice, some horsemen say half a dozen times, I believe it never forgets that. So, if it breaks, it is the worst thing that can happen in a horse's brain. Does that make sense? You cannot break because if it does, and you might, some people say, oh, well, my, my horse used to used to pull back and break string, doesn't do it now. And I usually find out years later, it did happen again because that, that memory 
will come back to it one day. And it's usually when something scares them, you know. Does that make sense what I've just said? Right, so, so, turn. So through the bottom and around the top. Now, Charlotte, my daughter, she leaves them on, okay? She leaves them on at whatever distance you tie. They're left on because they don't weigh anything anyway. I don't leave them on, okay? I prefer to have lots of these, which you can buy from, we, you always have one with each one, but you can hardware buy shop, shop. hardware shop and leave them all over the place. I and mean, we have them in the trailers, the lorries, everything. And all you do when you go up to tie your horse is clip it on. Okay. All right, so that is now your horse tied. So if now your horse spooks or you were trimming one that pulls back, it will come out. Yeah, okay. So they feel, well, they will panic at first if they're a pullback horse, but you have a longer rope and you say, go on then, go on. And they'll pull back sometimes to the barrow there and they slow down and so you just smile, bring them back, pull this back through and then pull them back a little bit into the pressure. They'll go, oh, and they'll pull back again. Usually 20 times and you can end up going, Psh, and they were, they're not, because they've worked out that they still have their flight. their flight and you find it helps so many horses but you can never take it for granted yeah. now if you want it stronger because that's quite you can turn them around and they're stronger then because that's stronger already okay. or you can just set it by just looping over a couple of times okay oh. and then just put the tail over there right and then you can set it to what you want because that's stronger now all right but a, but a horse would pull that out. Such a cool invention. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And we, we, don't, we, we haven't tied a horse, one solid or on string, for 20 odd years. Yeah, why would you when you have Why would you when you have something as cool as that? So does that, has that demonstrated that yeah. uh, really? And especially traveling in a trailer. You, have you ever seen a horse get their heads underneath? Yeah. Well, in a trailer, it's disastrous. With one of these, it will pull out. Yeah. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. it's awesome. So I'll take that off now. Like, there's a few there for you. Thank so I you. think if you get used to using them. Because especially at feeding times, we have to tie them up to feed yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. So to have something like that as a safety precaution yeah. would be really amazing. Do and he had a no skin, really, no fur. So that's pretty much the horsey side of it uh, done with the video. And there's about 10 minutes or so now <laughs> where we're showing around this amazing place, really. And uh, if you're interested in just seeing the place and the different animals, then that's what this little bit is now. Stephen, when the, the, the volcano on La Palma yes. went yeah. off, you came. Oh, right. How long yes. ago was that then? This was roughly about two years ago. And this is that uh, very eruption, guys, not far from here, on La Palma. Um, so I checked it out, and yeah, look, <laughs> real, real proper one. And that's what uh, we, 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 there's a volcano that I can see out the window now called Mount Teed. Now, I took this video when we was on the plane. Uh, coming in to land and that's Mount Teed poking up through the clouds there and it's uh, 30,000 feet or something like that. And we'd landed. Short runway actually. It's <laughs> quite bumpy. The volcano went off? Yes. Oh. And as the magma was coming down the island they rounded up as many animals as they could and they put them into big warehouses. Oh. Um, and unfortunately, there's a condition here and in Spain called fly worry, which is like contact dermatitis with donkeys from horse flies specifically. So he was really affected because he was living inside in quite a wet climate. And we found that by bringing him here, being outside in the dryness, oh. a lot of his issues cleared up. But we've got a lot of donkeys in terrible conditions with oh. this fly worry. Right. Oh. Had we had a great, do we had a brilliant donkey. We, did, we only had one donkey really, haven't we, of our own? And he, he was absolutely brilliant. We bought him at auction. We didn't even want to buy it. We didn't go to buy it, but Tanya just fell in love yeah, well, with it. What happened was, Charlotte wanted a pony. So Steve said, we'll go to the local horse auction. Anyway, so we couldn't find a pony. And then there was an old man virtually crying. He didn't want to let go of this donkey outside. I said, oh, we'll have the donkey. And then Charlotte said on the way home, did you get me one? We said, yeah. <laughs> He's got really big ears. He's so <laughs> lovely. And then we opened the back of the trailer. She went, 
That's a donkey. Yeah, it's a donkey. <laughs> Needs the same colours as that. He one. thought he was a quarter horse. We yeah. had him. We got him his own little western saddle. saddle yeah. <laughs> he had a little western saddle and a little western bridle, and he used to come out with the quarter horses. And there is Jack, our Jack. And we had him for quite a long time, guys, and he did think he was a quarter horse. In the end, we didn't have enough land to keep him, and, and some uh, little girls had him. But Hello. 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 So what animals? It's not just horses, Tanya no, said. No, we have 400 Everything. animals here. Yeah. Wow, 400 four donkeys. Um, uh, Lana will be, she's like the face of the... Yeah, so she yeah. could, yeah. so if I, if I ask, could you explain a little bit about the rescue, then Tell she can me. do it. Yeah. Now, if you heard a squealing then, like a <laughs> that's Tanya that is. Whenever She's got this uncanny ability to get donkeys to bellow back at her to make the e or sound. And that's what that noise was then, right? It was Tanya. I was actually down the bottom, but I had to laugh when I saw this. She, so she singled out the donkey that you'll see now and he's, he's making those noises to try and get this donkey to, to actually bellow. And she did it. Yeah, really okay. right. yeah. That's awful. So, like, we have all, like, it's all about sustainable living here. Uh, Tanya, you have to... Uh, Tan, no, is this something that Lana can um, explain donkey. about? This? And if she points and then Tanya can... Because yeah. yeah. this, is, this is a little bit unique, isn't it, it really? Is. Oh. Yeah. 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 Did it. So what nationalities then? So you're... I'm English. You're English? Yeah. Okay. German. There's a little... It's probably because I live in here all the time. There's a little slang there, as if you might be European. But yeah, So English... But also, I grew up German. in the States, so I have a bit... Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can hear what that. What bit of the yeah. States was it? Michigan. How nice. Because uh, we're, we're there next month. Yeah. Is it next month? Is it next oh, month? Oh, gosh, yes. April. Uh, yes, uh, next month. Where are you going? Yeah, uh, to North Carolina. But we fly into Florida, then we got the car to go yeah. up to That's North Carolina. That's our first American demo. We're about, oh, we're about a month. We got, we're there about a month. Amazing. And then we're back to Texas then in, I think it's November? In October or November. Uh, October or November, then we're in Texas wow. doing something there. And there's the flyer for that um, North Carolina demo, guys. Saturday, 11th of May. It's 10 till 4. And me and Tanya will be there. And it's uh, Yadkinville, North Carolina. And uh, just message Tanya for the tickets. Oh, this isn't yeah. really about what I can achieve with a horse in an hour. Cute. It's about you know, making this place known, okay? It. So that's, right. that's what it'll go on a video oh, right. and we find that that can really help yeah, these kind of places. I have to get all your names, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. I've got, I wrote one Nina. down, Nina. Nina on his hand and, I know and Nina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have that many horse names. Yeah. In, in, you know, sometimes I go to a yard and there's five or six horses for me to look at. You know, you can't. No, I'm you know. Yeah. And, and now, and the, the thing is, is now. Either males and girls, and like, this horse, no, it's a mare. Okay, and he, no, it's a she, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but because I'm aware of it, because everyone says, oh, you forget names, I always know I'm going to do it, which <laughs> yeah. makes it worse. But everybody it? knows you forget. You know I'm going to forget. 50 yeah. volunteers they have. 50? 50. 50 volunteers. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so we've got a few bits here, which we're going to leave here. Okay, um, some things, you know, you might. You might uh, oh, enjoy using um we are a completely self-funded sustainable animal sanctuary run completely off of donations and social media uh, it started just as one little thing cut and a dream and the owners they didn't realize how big it was going to become now we have roughly four or five hundred animals wow. we've got 50 plus volunteers and five different pieces of land now and guys check check the uh, animal sanctuary out Wonderful place, um, Tenerife, um, the horse rescue, and this is the Facebook page. You make a start there anyway, and uh, the sea view. Some, it's a real nice Noticing page. Noticing the sea view, we'll yeah. have a look at that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Can't go without it in the mornings. Awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a really amazing place. You and don't waste any water, everything's made from... It's eco-friendly, you were saying. Exactly. It's. Um, they collect all the over fruit and everything from the from the supermarket. Yes. So if the world collapses, yeah. we can still keep going. Yeah. That's the idea, isn't everything it? Everything solar, our showers. Oh, are okay. Heated, compost heated. Oh my Whoa. Or solar as well, and our washing machine is a is a bicycle. Oh. Uh, is like <laughs> really? A bicycle pedal, so you just wow. And what I'll do, I'll put the link on the video underneath, the link to here, if anybody wishes to put any yeah. donations. Yeah, guys, do, do it, because we, we go to a lot of rescues, and this one is extra special. Yeah. And we haven't even started yet. Yeah. We haven't even started. Um, as you turn 
Turning those inside. That's right. <laughs> How about that, Dad? I think uh, I should get Don't one. get thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> think of the money yeah. we'd save. Wow. Oh, it's amazing. You get your gym time. I didn't think that was know. hard. That, that's, that, that, it's not hard to pedal, is it? No. no. I thought it would be a bit. How about when there's clothes in it, though? There is clothes in it. But there's no water. Uh, that adds a little bit, fair enough. And that's why everybody's so fit, Tanya. Yeah. <laughs> the clay oh, pizza. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Hello. Lots of pussy cats. Meow meow. So you've got all different people here with with skills to yep. sort of complement everything, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's accommodation for people to come. Oh, that was rented accommodation. For ah. Yeah. And it was the first rental accommodation. So I'm feeling there's yoga and all sorts of things going on here as well. Got meditation. Yeah. Oh, oh, I knew it. Meditation. It's all happening. I, I, Sorry. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. Wow. I mean, there's some construction going on. Yeah. But please feel free to just step Nice big bed. Oh, that, yeah. What does that remind me of, Tanya? Yeah. We, we, we went to do a horse demo and they gave us a teepee and it was fantastic. They said, there's your accommodation. We were, we were delighted. It was a proper, we were the first ever to stay in it and it was a huge proper teepee. Wow. You know, Tanya's cat's in there. That's Tanya's favourite. No. no. These are our leukemia positive cats. Oh. So unfortunately, they're they... quarantined. Yes, but in the Canaries... Oh, look, that's big. Yeah. Yeah. And in the Canaries, it's usually the opposite. Usually every cat you see is positive. And okay. And the ones inside are negative. But yeah. here, we're all yeah. negative. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And you see our clay team, they make like guinea pig palaces for them. <laughs> guinea pigs. Ducks. These puppies oh. were dumped here. Seven, seven weeks old. Seven of them on the doorstep. But do you know what I say? At least somebody dumped them on the rescue. Because so many sad stories in Spain. That they just dumped them anywhere. Well, that's definitely the end of the video, guys. Me and Tanya are sat here now in the hotel, the waiting for the coach uh, for the transfers to the airport. So I think we're going to be landing back. What time, Tan? 20 past 12. 20 past 12 at midnight. night, midnight. And then we've got a couple of hours, two and a half hours drive home then. But that's what you do to come away and do these things. So that's fine. Is so no this, like no, there isn't no place like home. So this video, guys, I know it's not the most sort of dramatic um, type of video, but I think it's a brilliant video and really shows um, how establishing quality leadership uh, with compassion, obviously, everything with as much quality to it as possible um, can make a, a change in the right direction and i think that's really evident in this video and uh, what else tanya oh yeah tanya looking at me please share like comment um that would really help us if you've got something out of the video and uh anything else tan next, next, stop, north carolina. next stop north carolina guys oh yes i wanted to say if you can give something to the rescue we we left some um, you know, halters, ropes and safety, ties, safety right. ties, things like that. And obviously we've put a mention on the video. So, you know, if you can send something or whatever, then that would be uh, amazing. So we're off now. Happy trails, guys. And uh, see, catch you on the next one.